Okay, let's create this monstrosity. Uh, why? Because we can. And the point is, um, while this is a strange uh, looking uh, chimpanzee or duck man walk, um, what I wanted us to look at is how we take something from Mixamo and modify it into something completely unique to our project. This is something I've been uh, experimenting with a lot of different uh, plugins to try to achieve. I've used Puppet 3D. I've used the animation rigging package from Unity themselves. And most recently, I have come across this, which is Umotion Pro. There is a free community version. This is the Pro. It's uh, not expensive at all. But uh, the community version does not have IK um, controls. And Pro does. Pro also allows you to import clips. You can learn more about Umotion from their own documentation. But I want to go into how to create a thing. So what I want us to do is come to start from a, a complete scratch. So I'm going to close out everything. We're going to uh, walk through this. So here's what we have. Uh, we have a Unity project has a soldier inside the default HDRP sample scene. And you'll see that all I've added is the soldier and a cube. Why the cube, you might ask, if we're working with the soldier? You're going to find out really quick. So let's, uh, let's say that we want to have our soldier walking. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag the soldier to the uh, timeline as an animation track. And if I add an animation, uh, which I will choose walk, he jumps off into the distance. Where does he jump to? Well, he jumps to coordinates 0, 0, 0, 0, wherever that may be uh, in relation to here. But zero is not here. So that's why he's gone. So that's why the cube is here. The cube I've placed, uh, I just drag it into the scene and I come uh, to the inspector for the cube and I look at its transform position, which is roughly 12 on X, 2 on Y, and 9 on Z. So 12 to 9. So I come back to the timeline and I select the animation itself and I come to the position. And I, I type in those coordinates roughly. So 12 for X, 2 for Y, 9 for Z. And then I use the clip transform offsets to tweak and get him into the position that I actually want him to be in. So now he's in the world where I desire him to be, so, which means we're done with the cube. We can get rid of it or just hide it in case we want to bring other op, uh, objects into the world space, uh, specifically here. So if you want to move this guy around once you've placed him, you'll notice that you, it, it can be a little weird. Like, um, well, take that. Uh, yeah. So if we move him using his normal transforms, and then we come to our timeline, you'll notice that he jumps to where we placed him with the timeline. Uh, animation offsets. So what you have to do is instead of moving your character around with his transforms up here in the inspector, you select the animation clip, come to clip transform offsets, use the position tool or the rotate tool. So we're going to position him here. I'm going to rotate him to move in this direction. So this means he now walks in this direction, but you'll see that he only walks for a portion of the clip and not the entire clip. The way we get around this is one of two ways. We can select our walk clip, come down to loop and use on, which means that it will always, that this clip instance will loop. And that this will allow you to uh, just have this one instance of the walk animation loop while if you were to use um, another instance of it. So uh, add animation clip, add the same one, walk, put side to side, 
more elongated, you can see that this one loops, this one does not. So the other option is you can go into your project, select your walk within your uh, imported uh, FBX, go to the inspector and then click on animation and scroll down until you see loop time. You can check that box and hit apply. Now if we go to timeline, and if we drag in the animation again by adding the animation clip, add walk, and if we extend it out, it will be looped. So it's using the source's asset and the, the, uh, the source asset. So this is the source asset here, and the default is that we checked loop. So whenever you see um, use source asset it's going to use the loop or uh, loop check or the unchecked uh, mark for loop or you can manually set it to on or off for looping all right so here we have our guy and he is walking now he is looping i'm going to put that on source off uh use source asset because it's set to loop so we have a guy walking but we want to customize his walk how do we do that well Let's say that we have, we know that we want him to, this is one walk cycle. That's it. Let's say we know we want him to walk from point A here to point B here. So we can extend this until he walks to the point we want him. So for just making this super clean, I'm going to round this up to the completion of this loop two, which is technically loop three, because it's loop zero is the first one, loop one is the second, and loop two is the third, okay? So now we have three loops. Great, dude's walking. All right, but we want to make this walk unique to our project. Maybe he's, uh, been bitten by a vampire chimpanzee and now he is slowly turning into a man chimpanzee and he needs to walk like one so we're about to create a monster so the way we do that is uh you imp you purchase and then you import you motion pro you absolutely need pro for this uh functionality because it allows you to do two things that i'm going to show you now so the first thing you do once you've imported it through package manager, there's so many tutorials on how to do all of that. I'll leave that to the others. Um, then you will click window, U motion editor, choose clip editor, and that will add this window here. Uh, and then choose, you also need to open up U motion editor, pose editor, which will open up this window. All right, so mine are already open, which is why I didn't clip it. So let's start a new Umotion project. So go to, with your clip editor selected, go File, New Project, Humanoid, because we are working with a humanoid character uh, from Mixamo, and when we imported him into Unity, we, uh, we chose Rig, humanoid so do i need to backtrack and show you that let's let's do that really fast just in case you are like me and you are encountering this stuff early on in your learning process so in your project when you go to mixamo and you create or uh, you you download an animation or a character you are going to have an FBX, and then when you, in your project file, when you select FBX and you go to your inspector, you have rig. You can choose, but it automatically imports as animation type generic. You want to click on humanoid and then just click apply. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, add create from this model, apply. That's it, uh, then you're done, okay? So that means that your character is now of the animation type, which brings us forward again to clip editor, new project, type humanoid. 
right? So if we have a humanoid character, we have um, a humanoid project. I'm going to call this um, monkey walk. I don't know if this is a monkey walk or a, a duck walk. Who knows what we're creating? So we have a new project, but now we need to assign our soldier to be the element that we are animating. So with pose editor present and open, you'll see this select the game object to animate. I want you to select the character that you're, you're working with. We're working with our soldier. We're going to drag and drop him into this slot. It's going to say new uh, rig detected. Would you like to configure this rig? Absolutely. So yes. Now, before anything else, we go back into our pose editor and we click on config mode and we go IK setup wizard and we hit OK. We make sure that target rotation are our IK handles and we select create. So you don't need to know what the IK handles are. You don't need to go into a lot of detail. You just want to make sure that that's what it's uh, selected as and then create. You'll notice you get these blue bones. So now back in pose mode, scroll down to the bottom of your window and choose rig layer. Which do you want to see? We only want to see, do you see how uh, there's some white bones and some blue bones? The blue, the white bones are IK, are FK, and the blue bones are F IK. Ah, it's just backwards here. You only want to see the IK because that's all we're going to work with. So that first step was we configured our character to move with IK uh, skeleton. Now we can import our walk animation that we are going to modify. And we do that by going back to our clip editor, choosing file, import clip, import clip. Oh, actually, I should say uh, this uh, in config mode, this uh, this IK setup wizard, all the stuff that we did with the IK, this is why you need uh, Emotion Pro. This is not present in the Emotion community, which is the free or light version. OK, so to do this you need pro okay back in clip editor uh i'm sorry pose mode you'll notice this trips me up a lot uh, clip editor is grayed out and you cannot do anything whenever you are in config mode so if you ever find that it's grayed out like i just did come back to uh, pose mode and you'll notice everything zips back into line for you so in clip editor choose file import an animation clip this is another feature that is unique to umotion pro that you will not find in umotion community is the ability to import clips animations that you get from mixima etc so i'm going to find my walking animation so it's this one i'm just going to drag it into animation clips and we are going to convert the fk to ik so all the FK mod animations in this animation, we are converting to work with our IK. So we are turning this to on and we are going to import. It doesn't take long at all. See, we have one imported, zero warnings, zero failed, which means we're good to go. Back in Clip Editor, you can now see that as we scroll along our timeline, we have our walking animation. Okay, beautiful. Let's say that you were working with timeline as I am because I like to work with I, I use unity not to build games but to make uh, film content you'll notice that as you scrub in your timeline nothing happens that's because your character is locked by emotion and whenever a character is locked in by emotion what that means is that the character has been assigned to the game object within pose editor but Umotion is brilliant in that you can sync it with timeline. So, or animation window or timeline. We're going to work with timeline. So, uh, when they are not synced, you can scroll at, and see the animation in Umotion, but you cannot see the effects within timeline. However, if we put our playhead at zero and we go to clip editor sync. With anim or with timeline window and no offset, meaning they are perfectly synced. Now, if I move my frame to 
uh, let's say the um, 25th frame, go to timeline, we'll see that the playhead has moved to that place as well. And also we can scroll within timeline. All right. But remember, we said in the beginning that we wanted our character to walk from point A to point B. And that's how we came up with loop zero, loop one, loop two. But you'll notice when we imported our clip into Umotion, the animation itself is only one walk cycle and then it ends. So it doesn't get him all the way to where he needs to be. So if we can see that in timeline. At the end of our animation, where our green playhead is, we have no more keyframes to go. If we go back to timeline, we can see that that corresponds with exactly the first loop cycle. And then the next frame, the next loop begins. But you'll notice that the loop doesn't play. That's because when you are watching this, you motion, the only actual animation that exists is one walk cycle. It's one step, two step, and then nothing else exists. Timeline is extrapolating and looping that. So in order to see the continuation, you need to go into clip mode, select all of your frames, and so I just uh, select um, uh, clip editor um, is active and I uh, command all uh, because I'm on Mac and I'm copying. So uh, command C, it'd be control if you're on Windows. Now, you'll probably see that I do some wonky zooming. That's because you when you use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out of your motion, it zooms in or out based upon where your cursor is. So right now I'm on the playhead of five seconds. And if I zoom in, it, it centers on five seconds. I forget that sometimes and I want to zoom in on this keyframe here, but I forget and my cursor is over here and then I have to zoom back out and zoom back in again. All right. Just a little tip for you. If you find it's difficult to navigate, that's because it's centering on your cursor. So what I have here is all of my keyframes selected. I'm going to the very last keyframe and I'm going to overwrite it by command V for paste. And the reason why I'm overwriting the last keyframe is because on an animation that is loopable, the first keyframe and the last keyframe are exactly the same, which means if I were to uh, not overwrite this, but simply paste the second uh, loop on the immediate frame after. That means I would have two frames of one position at the end of the animation, and that would look wonky. So by overwriting it, I make sure I do not have a duplicate frame. Now, we want, how many times do we want to copy this? Well, if we go to our animation, we know that we have one loop, two loops, three loops. So I'm going to go clip editor. We did it once. We did it twice. So we'll do it one more time. And I'm zooming. What's that uh, trick I need to get used to again? Uh, zoom in on the last frame, and I'm going to overwrite it. And there we go. So now we have three walking animations, but we're not quite where we want to be because you can see he walks once he walks twice but he jumps back to the beginning of the cycle and he loops a third time and he jumps back and we see the same thing in timeline because now we're seeing kind of the same thing all right so at the beginning of the second loop he jumps back to the beginning why is that if we go to clip editor the, the character's position along his path is governed by his hips. His hips control his root motion. And we can see that you motion is telling us that because for hips, for this hip bone, you motion gives us a little orange RM, which stands for this item has root motion applied to it. So the way we get this to stop looping it would be a nightmare if we tried to do it by individual keys. So this is where curves comes 
into play and it be, makes everything super handy. So what I want you to do, select just your root motion item, which is hips, not the root motion of your rotation because we're not worried about the rotation of the hips. We're only worried about the position in world space. So with only hips position selected, we change over from our dope sheet, which are our keyframes to our curves. Now we see, we see three axes. We see one for the X, one, one for the Y and one for the Z. And we can see that we want our character to smoothly walk from this point to the end. And we can see that two of these axes, the green, which if we look over to our, uh, uh, I don't know what animated properties window, you can see that green is the Y position. And we can see that the red gives us a nice, smooth, linear path. And red corresponds with our X position. It's only our Z axes that seems to start over at the beginning of each one. So this is how uh, easy it is to fix this animation and have it uh, have him traverse left to right seamlessly. So we only want to work with the blue, which is the Z. So I'm going to click on the I to hide the red X axes, and I'm going to hide the green Y axes. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to select by dragging my cursor over all of the keyframes for loops two and three. I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to click anywhere in this selected bounding box. I'm going to move upwards. I'm just dragging all of the keys together to where I think it looks correct. That looks nice. Deselect, zoom back out. We're going to repeat the process, but only selecting the third loop. Zoom in and shift up. Now, if you find that as you're shifting and moving up that you accidentally, you know, you move up or you kind of overwrite, that's okay. If you've overwritten, you're like, oh, what have I done? Just bring them back over and then slowly bring them over to be in, on the adjacent frame. And so we want something like that. So now, if we turn our axis back on, we can see that all three of our axes give us a very nice, smooth, linear motion. And what does that mean for our walking uh, character? It means he now just seamlessly moves through each of those animations. All right. Beautiful. So. Now what we've done, just a, a super fast summary, is we started in timeline to find out how many iterations we wanted this, how many iterations of the loop we needed to get him from our desired starting point to our desired ending point. We then came into clip editor and we uh, extended, we copy and pasted the animation the singular loop and we matched the number of loops that we needed that we got from our timeline and then we went into our curves and we made sure that all of our axes were linear and that none were stopping abruptly and then starting over again all right that brought us to this point here we are we have a, a man walking so now we want his walk to look unique so how do we do that? All right. Well, I want you to go uh, back into your dope sheet, which is your keyframes. And with your playhead positioned at frame zero, I want you to click anywhere in your scene editor. And I want you to control or command A to select all of your character's bones. And I want you to come over to your pose editor and check IK pinned. And then I want you to click uh, Generate. Uh, for under animation, you'll have key selected. You have Auto Key, which is off. You have, which means uh, you have to manually key, uh, enter keyframes for each uh, change position. Or you have Update, which will, every time you make an, a change, it will only 
uh, modify existing keyframes. And then you have generate. So generate does everything that update does. It will update your existing keyframes. But anytime that you modify a property that does not have a keyframe, it will add one for you. Generate is powerful and wonderful. It is our friend. So with generate selected, we go to key selected and key all. It will give us uh, dialogues for converting. Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. All right. So now we have uh, our character, and our character is walking, and his his uh, IK uh, bones, which are his legs and his arms, uh, are are pinned. What does pinning mean? Let's find out together. So if we do not have our character pinned. So let's do that by, let's see. You know what, let me, uh, I'm gonna select everything and hopefully I'm not gonna ruin my uh, project to, uh, up to this point by doing this. But uh, I'm on frame zero, I'm unchecking pin. So I'm going to unpin and I'm going to convert, 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 convert. Ah, I knew that would happen. So I'm going to show you <laughs> uh, what uh, unpinned looks like uh, at the end of this video because uh, going back and forth can be a mess. So, uh, so st we're back to where we left off, which is everything is IK pinned and converted. So we don't want to change the walk in here on this animation. That would be a bit of a nightmare. But what we can do is create our own changes on a clean animation layer that sits on top of this. And we can do that. Let's see if I can scroll over here. There we go. So here in this bottom corner of Clip Editor, we see layers. The base layer is our imported walking animation. We can add new layers by clicking this new layer button. And we have two layer types. We have additive and override. I'll show you both, but we're going to use additive. And the reason why is I'm going to name this hip position. What an additive layer does is allows us to make a change. So I'm what I'm doing is I am going to just kind of move around character. I'm going to grab his hips and I'm going to lower it to the ground. And already we can see, remember I'm going to explain unpinned and pinned uh, in a little more detail down the line. But if our character were unpinned and we moved his hips downward toward the ground, do you see how his hands and his feet are staying in position where they are? Even though I'm moving his body, his arms and legs are pinned right now and they're staying. If, if they were unpinned and I, drug, I dragged his hips downward, his feet would go through the floor, his arms would stay in relation to his body, okay? And that would be very difficult because we, if we wanted him to walk along the floor, which is what we want to do. So that's why we pin. We pin so that his feet will stay on the floor where they are, but we can move him into a crouching position. So now when we scroll on our um, timeline, our clip editor, we can see that he's now walking uh, in a crouched position. That's what override, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, additive allowed us to do. So this is an additive position or hip position. So what happens uh, with um, with an override. Override completely takes the animation out of a modified element. We, we'll see this by, let's, right now we see that his feet are walking, correct? If I add, so this is an additive layer. If I change the position of his leg by dragging it outward in a weird way 
we're not going to use this, but I want you to see how it's really uh, far out from the bottom. On an additive layer, that means we've changed the position of his foot, but it still has the walking animation applied. So let's get rid of that and let us create a new uh, override layer. And uh, we'll call this uh, foot change. We're going to delete this, uh, but I want you to see um, what the difference is. And here in your layers, you can tell which uh, layers are additive and which are override simply by the A and the O. So now you saw what happened when we changed the foot position by dragging it outward on an additive layer. He still, he walked with his foot out in this way. But on an override, if we move forward, do you see how the position is overridden? It will never move. It will, it's locked here in this spot. So that's the difference between override and, and now it just looks like his leg is, uh, is tied to something and it's tracked and it's not, it's not moving with the animation. So that's the difference between override and uh, additive. So we're going to delete this unwanted override track because we're only working with our additive layer. So here on our additive layer, we're going to zoom in and we're going to make a few more changes. Let's go with his, uh, his wrist. We're going to move his arm and I'm going to come up here and change this, the pivot from right now it's local. I'm going to change that to global. You're probably very accustomed to changing uh, that here from local to global. But this does not, this control does not work when you're in Umotion. I still find myself occasionally coming up here. It's not going to do you any good. You have to use Umo, Umotion's version, which is here. So we are going to lift his arm up. And I'm going to rotate the wrist. And rotate a little like this. And let's grab his, uh, the pole target of his, um, his arm. And move that forward. His arm's behind his head. So we can bring this down. Already he's looking really bizarre. Fantastic. All right. So can do the same thing with the other side. So raise the arm. Bring the wrist up. I want to get in close and look because sometimes, I, you know, you don't want the wrist to rotate beyond 360 on an axis because then it just flips around and looks really wonky so that's fine right. so now same thing we see that his uh, elbow is bending behind his body so we're going to move his pole target which tells his elbow which way to bend i'm going to bring that out in front of him a little bit and we're going to give him duck knees so we want his knees to uh, bend outward so again, we're going to select the pole target. I'm going to shift this out. I'm going to I'm going to bring it. Make sure it's well in front of his body. I'm going to do the same thing here. So bring that out. And let's see if this. Yeah, I figured that was going to be. Switching into orthographic was going to be a little bit of a problem. It, uh, it, it happens occasionally if, you, if you've got walls that are too close to you. So there's our guy. I'm just going to zoom in. We'll change our view, shift it around manually here. And there we go. So knees there, knees there. And I think this, this wrist can be a little monkey-like. 
All right. So now we've made all these modifications <laughs> on our uh, additive layer. So what we have is a normal walk. If I mute this, uh, you know what? This is no longer just a hip position. This is, uh, I'm going to edit this by clicking on the pencil. I'm going to call this uh, monkey mod. We'll call it monkey. Ooh, that's an echo. Uh, monkey modification. And okay. So this is what it looks like. We have this soldier who's been <laughs> bitten by a vampire monkey. And now he walks like a chimp uh, forever uh, through all eternity. That, that's the story and we're sticking with it. So this is uh, what Emotion has allowed us to do. Now, if we mute with this M, the layer monkey modification, we can see we have the normal walk. So we didn't have to create, with the beauty of Emotion, we did not have to create a monkey walk from scratch. We were able to take this very mundane, everyday Mixamo animation of a character walking, bring it into U-Motion, use it, uh, the IK configuration and setup and the additive layer function of U-Motion and modify the walking animation to create uh, our monkey man. So how do we get this animation out of U-Motion and into our timeline? Now, he, you might think it's in timeline because you can see it, but what we're really looking at is a clip editor controlling timeline. And you can tell that that's what's happening because your motion is locked. And also you have this little uh, warning icon. So what we need to do is export this clip, uh, this monkey walk and replace this normal walk with our new monkey walk. So let's do that. But First, why, let me show you uh, the beauty of why uh, we chose to sync things with timeline. We know that we started with timeline because we stated we wanted him to go from position A to position B. But what if we've built out our entire world and we knew that at exactly this point in time, not only did we want his walk to be uh, the way it is now, we knew that exactly at this point in time, we wanted uh, him to do something with his arms. Well, this allows us to see the character in the world that we've created so that all of our animations and modifications can be um, timed uh, properly within our world, within Unity. So. Right here, just as, just as he gets past the uh, golden ball that is in the background. Let's, uh, let's go into Clip Editor. And we can see that this is, um, well, it's frame 44 and it happens at uh, 1 second and uh, 14 frames. I believe is what this is telling me. So... Let's say that uh, just a little, let's say that we want the characters. Uh, I'm going to go a little before this and I'm going to make sure I'm on my additive layer. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to come look at the front of our guy. Let's say that we want, um, I'm going to set a keyframe just by kind of shifting the arm just a tiny little bit so it's barely no any move at all and then we know that uh, right here uh, we want the character to do something with his arm so let's just bring it down so I'm going to that looks awkward I want it out beside him all right, and let's bring this up, place it there. And I'm going to zoom in because I want 
to rotate his wrist. But remember, we don't want to go uh, in a, a, a manner that is going to go beyond 360 degrees in, a, in an axis. So let me see. Nope, see so what I'm doing there. We'll break it. So, you know what? I mm -hmm -hmm. got a little weird here. All right. Let me come on. We are uh, we're making a guy walk like a chimpanzee. This was weird from the beginning. Uh, uh, I don't. Okay, so undo this. You know what? I'm going to undo these, this arm modification simply because we're going to do it again from scratch because I want to understand what is going on with his wrist. So, All right, I'm I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I'm gonna straighten his wrist out here so that when I bring the arm down, I have a clear understanding of exactly where his wrist was. Mm. Stop with the orthographic. All right, so now. This is correct. We're not breaking his uh, his wrist. So now it's uh, down beside his body. So now what we have, nope, come out, is his arms up. And then right about here, his arm comes down. So we know that if we come up to our timeline and we come back out here, right around that spot, uh, Obviously, uh, our perspective is going to be different, so he may not be perfectly lined up with that ball because we're freely rotating our camera around. But we do know that right around this midpoint is when he's going to animate his arm. All right. So now we have a strange walk, and we have a precise uh, timing of an arm animation. Okay. Not too bad. So now we're done. <laughs> We've created a monster. We love it. Uh, we think it's charming, and we want to commit it to our project. So, we are still in Clip Editor. We want to go to, I'm sorry, we were in Timeline just a second ago. But we want to come over to Clip Editor, and we want to click File, Export Current Clip. It's going to ask us where we want to save that clip, but it asks us in a very strange way. It tells us that no uh, export settings have been selected, and would you like to open the settings? Hit yes. You can name your cl exported clip by coming over to clip. And we want the animation underscore walk is the name of our original. So we want to call this, um, let's call it, let's call it monkey mon monstrosity. Monkey monstrosity. Ah, come on. I don't think that's how you spell that. Uh, yeah. My OCD will not let me misspell things, so hold on. Oh, I was right. It just looks weird to me. I don't know why it looked weird. Maybe because of what we've been looking at for the last however long. So we've named our clip Monkey Monstrosity. And we want to go back to our project and choose a destination folder. So I'm going to click the three icons. It's going to ask, where do you want to save it? And I'm going to save it in animations. I have an animation folder. So assets, um, animations, and choose. And then you can close. Now, file, export, current clip. And it will run through the job for you. And it will tell you uh, how it how it 
finished. So you have one clip exported, nothing failed, and we have no warnings that we need to look at. So we hit OK. We can now go Clip Editor, Close Out uh, Umotion. When we close our project, it will unlock our soldier. So let's go uh, Clip Editor, File, Close Project. Go to our timeline and we see that we have our normal walk but we want our guy to do a monkey walk so we're going to do you let's see do you remember when at the beginning when we had to use the the cube as an anchor to bring our guy into a uh, position if i delete this walk and i bring in the monkey walk we're going to have to do that again. The other option is you can leave this in place, come to any further spot on the timeline and right click, add animation, find animation, monkey monstrosity, bring that onto the timeline. It's still going to be jumped uh you know it still jumps off into the distance which is way way in the distance back here but with this selected we can right click and choose match offsets to the previous clip which is this clip so now the monkey walk begins wherever the character exists at the end of this walking animation see and if we right now he's just snapping in he's going from normal walk and he snaps into the monkey walk if we wanted him to start morphing into the monkey walk then you can have the uh, walk and then blend it a little bit and he will slowly just blend down into it right and then you would adjust the length of the blend to provide a natural see that's a little weird right so whenever you change the blend you actually need to rematch the offsets to the previous clip because you probably saw that weird like he moved forward rather quickly now he doesn't now he just kind of ducks down into the walk and that's because uh the clip is matched to this position where he the character is in, is here but if we moved our uh we moved our animation forward even though we matched the uh, clip offset it was matched to somewhere about here and we've now moved it which means the character slides so every time you make a move you're going to need to rematch the offsets of the previous clip and you'll be okay so we've done that so remember uh what I was saying a second ago of we'd have to use the clue cube you can still use the cube or you can just drag it the character so that the start of the monkey animation is at frame one of the walk animation and oops maybe not frame one but uh, really close let's uh let's say like frame two and now match offset to previous clip so now with that done we can delete our animation and now what we have is a character who is back at uh, our starting point and who uh walks very strangely and probably doesn't have many friends maybe he does you know who are we to judge this guy actually might be very popular with the ladies very strange thing there we go so there we have um, a modified character walk and we saw how to do it what tool we want to use to do it uh, uh, which is umotion pro trust me i have tried the animation rigging package from unity and i've tried puppet 3d and they have uh they're, they're powerful but they are not the tools for this job i have struggled with them greatly and this i found to be very simple so and we saw how to blend uh, a couple of animations that was a bonus and we saw how to bring a, a character into a spot so i'm going to delete this guy 
So here you have, uh, we know that we have a character. I'm going to drag this character out of the world. So now nothing's here. Uh, and I'm going to delete this cube. So why am I doing this? Why did I delete everything we just did? Because I want to show you how it all comes together. So in your project, you are going to have a character. And while I'm, all my characters are here in this character folder, I'm going to grab my soldier and I'm going to drag him into this world. I want him to position here. And I know that I'm going to use timeline to create a film scene so uh, of my soldier. So I know that I want to drag my soldier to the timeline as an animation track. And I know that I want him to walk like a chimpanzee. So I'm going to right click, add from animation clip and choose monkey monstrosity, which is what we created. And we know that he jumps away and that's such a pain. Now, so that's why I find it's best to uh, add a, an object. But when you create an object using uh, this method, um, you'll see that it, it jumps way off in the distance too, right? Because everything is created in space zero. So I'm going to just drag this forward. And that's why I, whenever I start a film scene, I think that I'm probably going to begin with, um, with this very process of setting it, using any kind of object in my scene as an anchor point. And now I'm going to select the uh, anchor object and just look at its position in world space, which is, let's say, 11, 1, and 8, which means I can select my monkey monstrosity and I can go to position under animation clip. And I can go 11. I've already forgotten. I'm going to say two and I'll go with eight. Okay. That's really close. So once you've got him close and in scene, now you can fine tune it with the clip transform offsets to bring him into a precise space where you want him to be. And then you can also use the rotation to say, well, I, I don't want him to walk. Um, you know, let's say that uh, he was this way. I don't want him to walk this way. I want him to walk across the screen laterally. Well, we can just set this. So now that's precisely what he does. And he's gone, right? And we can loop this as much as we want. And he will loop off into the sunset to find other chimpanzees. All right, so that's everything. That is it. I just wanted to go over that, not only to provide a hopefully helpful insight for you if you're looking on at how did how do you do this with unity but also as like a, a document of record for myself because i've struggled with all types of uh tools and workflows and when i stumbled upon this i not only wanted to write it down for myself but i also wanted to talk it out with with fine folks like you so that um i'll help cement it into my brain but also uh i wanted to be able to uh help others. Uh, I want to hear from others. If you have uh, insight and uh, ideas on how to do things uh, differently or more efficiently or better, I want to hear about them. Uh, so let's help each other. So that was the point of this uh, documentation and really drilling it down into my brain by talking it out and demonstrating it uh, and repeating it. So that's how this is done. I hope you found this helpful and productive, and I hope that you are able to put it to use in your own projects. Thanks to Peter who makes you motion. Uh, he does not know me. Um, I don't have an affiliate link with him. Uh, I just know that this uh, you motion uh, plugin has made my life so much easier. So uh, to the developer of you motion, uh, I believe you, his name is Peter. I say thank you. All right. Good luck, everyone. I hope you create some cool things and thanks for watching.